The Israeli genocide in Gaza is deeply rooted and well planned for more than a century. You heard the myth propagated in Europe a century ago that Palestine was a land without people. It turned out to be a Zionist plan to empty it, to expel its people and kill them. In 1940, Yusuf Weitz, the Zionist colonist under the British mandate, declared that not one Palestinian village will remain in Palestine. In 1948, 530 cities and villages were attacked and depopulated by a Zionist European army of 120,000 soldiers in nine brigades, which carried out 31 military operations and committed 90 massacres, occupied 78% of Palestine. They made its people refugees till today. They are now 9 million Palestinian refugees. The hypocritical West cries that the hostages must return home. They send bombs to kill. They cast veto to kill international law. They prevent entry of food and medicine. They aid and abet total destruction of Gaza. All this is in order to release captured East European settlers to return home. I fully agree that all hostages must be freed to return home. But who are the real hostages? They are 2 million Palestinian refugees in Gaza concentration camp from 247 towns and villages in southern Palestine expelled by Israel in 19 1948 through dozens of massacres. They are crammed in a concentration camp called Gaza Strip at a density of 8,000 persons per square kilometer. Its area is 1.3% of Palestine. Who occupies their home now? East European settlers from Romania, Poland, Ukraine and Russia. Their number is only 150,000, at a density of only 7 persons per square kilometer, 1,000 times less than the owners of the land, the refugees in Gaza. So, who are the real hostages? Are they the 150 European settlers held in Gaza for 200 days? Or, are they the 2 million Palestinian refugees held in Gaza who are attacked by land, air and sea, and blockaded for 76 years, or 27,000 days? Who are the true hostages. I maintain without reservation, all hostages should be free to return home. Palestinians to Palestine and settlers with foreign passports to wherever they want to go. For 76 years, the Palestinians never stopped claiming their right to return home. The UN Resolution No. 194, calling for the right of return, has been affirmed by the UN more than 130 times, the longest in UN history. International law and a myriad of UN conventions support the right of return. Shall I tell you some of these? Fourth Geneva Convention Convention Article 4, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights Articles 8 and 13, the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court Articles 7 and 8, the International Convention of the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination Articles 5 and 6, and many more. Why are the Palestinians still not allowed to return home? Because the original perpetrator of the crime and his cohorts are still doing it. These are the Western powers which created Israel, which recently vetoed the ceasefire resolutions three times. They are still supplying Israel with bombs to kill and political protection. The original crime is still going on. In the face of all this, the Palestinians are defiant and resolute. They have no intention of giving up their right of return. They do not want to remain refugees forever. So we have a duty to plan for their return. First, we see who and where the refugees are. Next, we see who occupies their land in Israel. We made a detailed study, village by village, city by city, to find how many Jews live in Palestinian lands and where. We found a startling result. There are 246 Palestinian village lands which have no Jews today. There are 272 village lands which have few Jews, less than 5,000. So, if we now repopulate Palestinian villages by the return of the refugees, we do not find any appreciable problem of Jewish displacement. In Galilee, the little triangle in the center, and in Beersheba, there is already a sizable Palestinian population ready to welcome their kith and kin. Then, where are the Jews in Israel? Generally, Jews live in 924 listed localities with a total population of 5,509,778, within the armistice line of 1949. But this large number may be misleading. Only 14 of them have a population of over 100,000, 12 have a population between 50 and 100,000, and 20 29 localities between 20 and 50,000. That means that 87% of Jews live in only 55 localities. The area they occupy is 1,400 square kilometers or 6% of Israel's area. The conclusion? The return is feasible and of course legal. To Palestinians, it is also sacred and inevitable. We can plan the return of the refugees from their camps. We know exactly where they come from. The route to return home takes from 15 minutes to 45 minutes and it is never longer than 45 kilometers. In Gaza they do not need buses, 
they can simply walk home. Justice will be made at last. But all this needs the implementation of one basic principle. This principle is essential, just, non-negotiable, and inevitable. It is the abolishment of Zionism and all its components, war crimes, dispossession, occupation, apartheid, racism, discrimination, and genocide. After the passage of 76 years, Palestinians never lost the determination to return home. Thank you. Salman Abu Siddha.